is Real to Real Podcast. Real stories, real sports. And here's your host, Wu Bag Cabrera. To real to Real. And listen, when I started this podcast, everybody kept telling me, when you come back, man, you got to get some heavy hitters, man. I think I did that on this guest right here, man. I'm a huge fan of my man. He's one of the most successful and dominant high school basketball players in the state of Virginia, where he scored over 2,500 points. One of the greatest players in ODU history. He was a two-time CAA uh, Player of the Year. He was an all an honorable mention, uh, All-American uh, while he was at ODU. He had a successful career in Europe. We're going to get into everything. But first, I want to introduce, it's my honor, my, I'm humbled to have this man on our show, man, on Real to Real, Mr. Odell Hodge. Odell, I know you're busy, my man. I really appreciate you coming on. My pleasure. Um, it's been a long time coming. Um, I'm honored and humbled uh, to have this opportunity to be on your show and uh, looking forward to it. Let's let's have some fun, man. Let's have some fun, man. Let's go down memory lane. And uh, Martinsville, Virginia, Odell, when I say that, uh, what comes to mind? Home. It's, you know, for me, it's still home. Um, the last time I was in Martinsville was in 2016 uh, when um, – when my mother passed away, um, I got back. I uh, haven't been back since, um, but I'm looking to make a uh, trip with uh, with my family uh, coming up here in the next couple of months. Um, then I would definitely get back to Martinsville. But Martinsville is, is um, what can I say? It's where the roots, where everything has started. You know, I owe a lot to the city, owe a lot to some, you know, some guys there that helped me, uh, put me in a position where I have been over my uh, over my career. So growing up, uh, when did sports start becoming a factor? I mean, when did you kind of know to yourself, okay, basketball might be able to take me somewhere? Well, let's let's back up a little bit. So let's talk about uh, mid eighties when it was you know pee wee football, flag football, um, playing uh, middle school, um, then. I guess, let's say towards the end of my uh, middle school year, um, we decided to switch course and, and go towards more basketball because we saw that I was able to do something. Uh, my cousins, friends, uh, the boys, you know, we, we played in school, we played in the backyard. Uh, so you started to pick up, you know, the skill set and the development and the, and the fundamentals and I, I guess um, from that point, from from middle school on, um, we, we thought we had a shot. So when I went to Laura Park in, uh, excuse me, in 1988, um, coach, uh, he didn't promise me anything because, you know, then, back then, it, it's high school started eighth grade, right? Right. So um, we was uh, eighth grade, junior varsity. Um, and then uh, from 1989, I was able to start as a freshman. Laurel Park yeah. High School, you mentioned it, man. You scored uh, over 2,500 points there. Um, what was that like, man? Because, I mean, like I said in the intro, man, you were the most one of the most successful and dominant high school players. At the time, when you left, I think you led the state in scoring at one point. So um, what was it just like? Just like you said, ninth grade, you started playing. And what was it just like going through the ranks until you got to your senior year? Well, when I first started, you know, I had, I had a lot of guys. Uh, that was above me, obviously. Uh, some juniors, some seniors, some upperclassmen that uh, paid the way, put me in position. But I, I owe a lot of guys credit back during my high school, you know, the, break, the upbringing, the, the beginning when I was a freshman. Uh, because, you know, this guy comes in highly uh, recommended, tall, skinny, um, didn't, didn't really have the athleticism. Then, uh, you know, everything had to grow. Um, and then, yeah, you know, step by step, you know, it was a grind, right? Um, my freshman year was pretty successful. Um, you know, some ups and downs, but pretty successful. I came back and had a bounce back, uh, let's say bounce back, uh, productive sophomore year where I was um, Piedmont District Player of the Year. Um, Timeline in Roanoke. It was a newspaper in Roanoke, you know, player of the year as a sophomore. Uh, I think at that point there, we started to realize that uh, we maybe can go far with this uh, junior year. I backed up what I did my sophomore year. Um, and then I guess towards 
the middle part of my last year, senior year, um, my high school coach, Frank Scott, he came to me and said, you know, um, you're in a position to be all time leading scorer in the state of Virginia high school district. Uh, and I said, no coach, had no idea. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm worrying about, I'm worrying about winning games, man. I was never, uh, let's say into the individual part, you know, yeah. uh, I, I thank all my teammates, uh, helped me and, and kept me humble, kept my feet on the ground. Um, but he said, well, I tell you what, you're about, uh, at this point, uh, I think I was over, let's say I was, let's say, I, man, it's almost 30 something years ago. I know it was long. I, I oh man, I guess I was at that point when he told me a little less than halfway of the season. So we still had, let's say, right. When you go all the way to state and regionals, regionals and state, we still had over 18 games left. Yeah. Uh, and he said, if you pick your average up, because I think at that point I was averaging 28 a game um, mm -hmm. as a senior. He said, well, you can get it up to like 30, 35. You might get a shot. Well, I had a few games where we went it well into the 40s. Uh, I think my career high at that point at high school was in Tulsa High School, right outside of Danville. I think it was 47. Mm. Uh, or 47. Then I had a couple 41 games and then, you know, a bunch of 30 plus uh, games. And then um, in the regional championships in Salem, Virginia, at the Salem, Salem Citizen Center, that's where I passed the record. Um, and it was a very emotional because, you know, a kid from Martinsville, Virginia, you know, yeah, right, right. went to Law Park. Uh, Law Park High School, you know, very small area, uh, but known for their sports. Martinsville High School, obviously, uh, Magna Vista, you know, schools there. So Law Park was in the up and coming. Right. To put us on a map like that uh, with such an honor uh, was uh, was tremendous. And when I left school in 92, I was all-time leading scorer. Mm, that's awesome, bro. That, yeah. That's when I read, I mean, obviously – Things have changed and some guys have hopped over. You're still in the top 10 and scoring. You know, you still left a mark and a legacy. Yes. It's gonna live, it's gonna live forever, man, as you can tell your family. So you dominate high school. And when your coach told you, you could be the all-time leading scorer, were you thinking obviously you were thinking next level, right? So, so when did the recruiting start to really hit you, man? Was it sophomore junior year? Well, it was the middle of my sophomore year, but um not only the high school success that we had, uh, that I had also as an individual player. Um, the AAU sector was huge for me. Um, mm -hmm. You know, playing in Martinsville, uh, Virginia, you know, we didn't have that much notoriety. So, you know, we started off with a team in Martinsville um, and then Richmond Metro mm -hmm. uh, contacted me. Uh, so, you know, I'm playing with Junior Bear that went to UVA. Mm -hmm. I'm playing with Jason mm -hmm. Willifel. Uh, playing with Corey Alexander, you know, I'm playing okay, with all the okay. all the U, UVA guys, uh, and we develop a close relationship. And I speak to them guys quite often, also. Um, and, and the AAU, on top of what I was doing in high school, helped me continue to develop my game. Um, and then next thing you know, I had college coaches coming to my workouts, my mm. after school three thirty p.m. just pick up basketball games. Um, before the season would start, I would have three, four, five, six, seven coaches coming in watching us play. Um, so you know you want to put on a show there. You want to make sure that uh, you didn't get hurt by trying to show them what you can do. And then at that point, just try to be yourself. You know, you a lot of nerves because um, they're taking the time out of their busy schedule. Some was driving uh, four or five, six hours to come and watch us work out just uh, for two hours. Yes. Uh, so that was, that was a blessing. And, um, you know, I think it's well documented that, um, I had a learning disability too, uh, throughout my high school, um, career and, um, you know, going to college for me, uh, you know, we had to work for it. We had to work and, and uh, you know, all my teachers and, uh, all my tutors and everyone to help me, um, focus and be able to, uh, take this academic part to a whole different level. Um, so I guess at the end of my sophomore year, we thought we had a chance. Um, and, you know, all the schools around was recruited. 
but a lot of schools was hesitant because of the learning disability that, you know, that I had. Uh, and that's respectful. You know, you give that a place at the time. You don't understand that. Right. Um, but um, when I when I passed my SATs um, uh, early on in um, in, uh, in 92, uh, early on, I guess, was uh, or even 91, uh, late 91, November 91, I passed my SATs. And then, you know, the floodgates came, the flood, right? The floodgates opened up, <laughs> yes, sir. It, it, you know, it, it, it opened, and, and let's say um, the who's or who's came out then, you know, like. <laughs> for sure, um, for sure, for sure. <laughs> uh, but the reason why um, I choose ODU is because, you know, Oliver Brunel, uh, yep. who's one of my mentors, um, was, at, um, was at the University of Radford. Uh, Tick Price was at the University of Virginia, uh, Virginia Tech, at Vi Tech. Uh, Pete Strickland was at VMI. Um, and Frank, uh, Frank Smith was uh, also with uh, Coach uh, Purnell at Radford. Mm -hmm. So basically, all four recruited me um, from, you know, three different schools. And uh, I just found that interesting that they all winded up at ODU. Um, so, you know, taking a visit to VCU, taking a visit to uh, Liberty. I went to Liberty because of the Christian background. Um, right, right. And then I canceled a visit to um, University of Richmond. I canceled one to Georgia Southern um, and, you know, Wake Forest and them. They came back a little bit later, but I had already, you know, set my mind on, you know, in-state school. Uh, and I wanted to go somewhere where I can make an immediately impact. And uh, when I went to ODU to visit uh, with Coach Purnell, and he got me out there on the ocean shore uh, you know, from, Mar from Martinsville, Virginia, you know, I thought I was a- That's a good hey, recruiting tool hey, for you for hey, being on the mountains, you know what I mean? Oh my God, man. So when I get out there on the beach and get out there on the shore, I was in heaven, man. Um, so he sold me. Um, and I told him uh, right there on the visit, uh, I've seen what I need to see. Uh, I'm on council remaining uh, visits. Uh, in all purpose, uh, this is why I be, be attending school. And he said, oh, you need to go home and think about it. Um, you don't have to make a decision now. So the decision's already made. Um, so I made that decision uh, at the last day of my uh, recruiting um, visit to ODU. I went back home, talked to my, talked to my special education teacher, uh, Ms. Harris, uh, told her you know, that decision was made and it was easy to go into the season knowing where I was going to go to school at. And, you know, you had that part uh, out the way. You know, and, I, and I, I'm glad you mentioned that, Odell, because I want everybody that's listening and watching to, to take this into consideration. Like, you had to learn a disability, but you did not let that stop you. You know, a lot of people will hide from it and, and make excuses. But, I mean, you just sit up here and say, bro, you, you, you passed the SAT. And at that point, a lot of people that have learning disabilities I mean, we, even people who don't have learning disabilities don't test well. So you took the test, you passed the test, you felt comfortable at ODU, you persevered through high school. And I just think that's a, a great story that people need to understand is like, man, you know, you can, you can make it regardless of your disability, uh, where you're from, came from Martinsville, which is a small town. Um, you know, I don't want to say the odds were stacked against you, but you had a long a hill to climb with all those things you dealt with. So you finish out your senior year, you get to campus at ODU, Coach Purnell. Who was there when you was PD and, and PD Mike Jones already there? Yeah, they were there. Which, okay. No, no, no. They was there. Um, okay. so PD, Mike Jones, Dave Harvey, yep. um, you That's know, Keith Jack. Yeah, yeah, man. Keith Jackson. Keith Jackson was a senior. Um, uh, Donna Anderson, um, Kevin and uh Kevin Larkin and Kevin, Kevin Swan. Larkin. Yeah, yeah, Kevin yeah. Swan. Yep. 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 So um the, the team, man, they was already good. They was already man. good. And um, um, Re Renato uh, Leonard, they yeah. just won the championship the year before I got there. So yeah. they was already well established. We came in with a real uh, highly recruited class. Myself, uh, Mario Mullins, Local Derek guy. and Corey Parker. Yep. Yep. Uh, we had a guy named Mark Johnson uh, from um, – from, um, uh, I want to say Ruxbury, Virginia. Mm -hmm. So, uh, man, we had the who's who, Corey Wims. Uh, our recruiting class of 92 was probably one of the best in the state. 
Mm -hmm. um, and so we got in the fair. So me and Mario Mullins started right away. Uh, that, yeah. Our first game, our first game in 92, uh, 93 season was at Carolina, Eric Montrose. That's my welcome. That was my welcome to, <laughs> uh, to college basketball. Yep. So yep. Um, I had nine points, uh, I think three rebounds. And when we got back to Norfolk, I was back in the gym. It's like, all right, this is what it's going to take. And I think from from that game on, it only took one game. Um, and I think I, I put my foot down and, and said, you know what, um, they recruited me for a reason. I came here for a reason. It's time to make an impact, even as a freshman. So I used that game as motivation and said I would never play a bad game twice in a row. Um, and I didn't throughout my career at ODU. And, um, you know, that first year I was freshman of the year, uh, yep, yep. Uh, record of the year um, uh, in, the, in the Colonial Athletic. And then that carried me to my sophomore year where, um, you know, you, you work, work, you put in some time. I was able to go play for U.S. basketball um, uh, that summer. So everything helped, everything helped um, and, and put me in position to have a pretty successful year. We lost that game at the buzzer against James Madison. Oh, uh, man, uh, that's tough. Kent Kaluko I showed that. Oh, uh, yeah, Kent, Kent Kaluko hit that dagger. Yeah, man, that's um, crazy. You know, because... You know, I showed that to my to my family uh, before to add a motivation. They said, why did you show this game? I said, because I want you to see it's not always about winning. Right. Uh, right. You have to learn how to lose. And boy, I have lost in some of the biggest games of my career. Um, yeah. You know, and that was a game where, you know, we lost and I was still MVP of the tournament. And I was like, <laughs> um, and it was hard to accept that one right. um, because we lost the tournament. And I thought somebody else that won it deserved it. Uh, but again, it shows you uh, how close that game was because I guess even with Kent hitting that shot, they couldn't go back on the vote uh, because I blocked the shot with 1.1 seconds to go in that game. Um, and we was and we called a timeout and we talked about that to this day. Uh, you know, uh, maybe not the wisest thing to do, but you know, we're we're student athletes. We don't question the coach. Uh, but you give them a chance to set up a last second play, and yeah, they hit the uh, hit that dagger. Um, and you know, so we go out and we end up losing to Bradley and uh, Bradley University in the NIT uh, second round. And then Pernell left. Pernell left and uh, went to Dayton. Yep. Um, and I was contemplating on going with him, so we went back to his place where we had that recruiting visit at. Uh, and I said, Coach, I want to go with you. And he said, yeah, but I don't want to take you away from the school. Um, you know, you have everything, uh, what, you know, what you need. You have everything uh, at your disposal here. Um, and, you know, it'd be hard. You have to sit out a year. Uh, I don't really care. And then he said, yeah, but if you, if you want to make a statement or if you want to, let's say, change the narrative of what's going to happen here, then you have to make a statement. And I remember taking that at heart and I was like, oh, Okay, so I came out. I had an interview with um, um, with the pilot uh, and, and Virginia pilot, and and I remember saying something to the fact that uh, I might leave school, um, I might transfer, or I might put my name in the NBA hat early. Mm -hmm. um, and most of that was a cry for help. Right. Uh, most of that was um, you know was a little bit of tension grabbing, trying to. Um, make sure that we was going to bring in the right guy because uh, it was certain coaches that was interviewing at that time that really didn't want me or didn't recruit me because of the learning disability that was right, going to be right. put in positions to coach us there. Um, and if I had a voice, uh, which I did, but a small one, because I didn't view myself as someone that was going to be a coach killer because I always got along with all my coaches. Right. Um, but it was a few that was being interviewed that, uh, I kind of made it clear that, uh, okay, you guys can go into whatever direction you want, but if this particular or that particular guy come in, um, then it's the chance of me leaving is going to be higher. Uh, and then I, I, I had a chance to reach out to Wake Forest. Uh, they reached out also because they heard I was ready to, uh, you know, you had to be careful with all the rules that mm -hmm. we had to deal with. But when they hear that it was coming from me, uh, one of my good friends to this day, Coach Strokes, uh, Ricky Strokes, was assistant coach. 
And, you know, when, you, when you're making decisions and you're thinking about everything, um, so that would be going into my junior year. So we're talking about 94, 95. Um, I didn't want to sit out. So it came down. I didn't want to sit out a year um, over the chance to play with Tim Duncan. I was okay. just getting ready to say that. Duncan was right. there. Yeah. He was there. Uh, Randall Chu was in his last year. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, so I, I decided to stay at ODU. You know, fast forward f- uh, four months into the, uh, what was it, one month into the season, four games into the season, I tear my ACL. Yeah. Yeah. You see? So, but I look at that as a positive because it put, it, it, it helped me slow down and, and really put a lot of stuff in perspective uh, and, and really take this game for what it, what it really was and not get too arrogant or too too big of yourself because, you know, just like that, it can be taken away. Um, so that was pretty much um, the first couple of years. And then the rest year, year where I, I was just basically in rehab, that was hard. That was really mentally hard uh, because I, I get to go to all the home games. And then all the games that we took by bus, other than the trip we took to Hawaii, everything else, I stayed back. But in a blessing, it was not that bad because I was able to catch up on some uh, work in, this, in the classroom. I was able to do a lot of uh, uh, stuff out in the community. Um, so I looked at that as a positive also. And so it, it might have seemed like it at first, but I was really happy that I stayed because you know, we choose, I choose the school to make an impact. And, and I think I did after, you know, being there for five years. And then I came back from the injury, had a, let's say, a uh, little bit above average junior year, uh, basically because, you know, trying to get back in the swing of things, uh, picked up some weight, mix of muscles and, and fat. So, you know, you go yeah. overweight. Um, then I went on my second, NIT all-star trip to Europe and that trip uh, the second time helped me come back and and have the year I did my senior year I was able to uh, like say cap it off I went into CA championship because um, I didn't win it before we lost it at the buzzer the year I was hurt we won it but I was injured but to have an impact on it uh, because I was known at that time as a player that had a lot of individual awards yeah. never won a big game because of the circumstances of you know whatever um but i wanted to have input uh impact on, on winning and that was my defining moment and i think that was one of the greatest moments uh that i had at ODU by winning that uh that was one of the greatest moments at that particular time um was winning the, the ca tournament and I, and I and like I told you off air, man, I was I was there at that time, and I remember you running around the Richmond Coliseum, and, and you had like I think like twenty rebounds, twenty one points. Yeah. You had a big yeah. game, yeah. And and all the commentators kept saying was, you know, look how excited he is because you showed your emotion in that game, and you could tell that that meant a lot to you. But I gotta ask you, I know you were not about individual awards, but to get two time CAA Player of the Year, you played the year twice in the conference. It's not. It doesn't happen often. Uh, what's what's your mindset and your process, your thought process when you're getting those awards, individual awards? I know you wanted that championship, but it had to mean something to you to get those those uh, those uh, player of the years. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you, you'll be lying if if you. I'll be lying if uh, if it wouldn't. You know, um, uh, I think what, what the the most important thing is is you know you do it year by year. All right, you set you set individual goals. You know, you you set team goals. Um, you set individual goals and then you set goals of where you want to be at, let's say in four years. So at this time, where you want to be at, um, I had a, uh, knack coming into ODU that I can put the ball in the basket that I can score. Right. Now remember, remember I did all of this, right. Without shooting threes. Right. Right. Exactly. Right? Think, exactly. Of, think about that. So I put up t- over 2,500 points in high school. Without shooting threes, I think I made two threes in my four-year career, and I think I only shot three in my four-year career. And I was a pretty good shooter, but didn't have to at that time. And coaches right. wouldn't let us big guys 
shoot at offer. Now you have stretch fives, stretch fours all over the place. Because I told I told my boys and I tell all my friends all the time, you know, score 25 points, 2,500 points in high school. That's all love and that's that's a lot of points. But if I was able to shoot the three like I was doing in the pickup games, I will put that score. I might still be leading the score. And I say that. Yeah, you're right. I I say that laughing um, and jokingly, but with a little bit of seriousness. And that's the same thing, because I think I'm still third leading score in ODU history. Yep, you are. Yep. And I I said it also. Um, If I was able to shoot threes, then I will put that out of of reach. Uh, I would probably be either tied for first or somewhere um, at first uh, because of the ability, but I accepted my role. Right. right, right. Um, so it's a mindset. So go, because I feel like uh, that I deserve to have been on the all CA team as a freshman. But that's just competitive spirit. That's nothing right. about being arrogant or uh, not, not humble about it. I just feel like uh, I made an impact. But also, right. you know, you have to give respect to the to the older guys. But coming in as a sophomore, my uh goal was to be just on the all C A team because we still had some great players. Mm. The 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 game that we beat UVA at scope when it was that. sold out, you remember that right? Yes sir, yes sir. Um that's when I thought I had a chance to be player of the year as a sophomore because that team was man, not only was it star studded with myself, PD says Mike Jones, uh, Mario, David, yeah, wow. uh, Kevin, the two Kevins, man, yeah. that team was star stuttered, man. Yeah. And I owe a lot of, of this credit. All of the success that I've had it would never be uh, done without my teammates, man. That's and right. and, right. and, and PD, PD was, oh, I played man. against him. I played against him at an AAU. His reputation speaks for itself. He was one of the most highly recruited guys before I got there. For him to say to take a let's say a secondary role, right, and, right. and let me it says a lot about the guy Peter Sessions. Yes. Um, because he could have said, "Hey, no man, you, you're an underclassman. You, you wait your turn." Um, and, and we never we never had a conversation about whose team it was because we was never built like that. Yeah. Um, we was competitive. We we all went at each other in practice. We we knew we had something um, uh, much more than individual um, uh, success. And and I didn't go in and say I wanted to be Player of the Year. I think after that UVA game, you know, psychologically and, and self consciously, and when you're talking to yourself or you're talking to some close friends, oh man, we got a shot. I got a shot at this. Uh, but also, PD had a shot at this too, you know. He did. He did. Um, and um, and and I and I, but I said I will I will never accept anything uh, without the credit uh, credit in uh, my teammates. Um, and the last year, because I, once I wanted my sophomore year, my goal was to win it three times, like David Robinson did. So, so the redshirt year, uh, the injury. Uh, uh, block that but I, if i'm not mistaken if i'm not mistaken i thought pd wanted that year but i'm not sure if he did it with somebody from vcu i don't know if they gave you the PD or not. i think pd yeah. i think pd might have got that the year they beat I, villanova i think you did the year Vill- they beat villanova i think pd yeah. was the conference player of the year because um uh, they they had a they, we we had a great year but i went down oh, I know, um man. because i remember uh Having a meet, having a conversation with the late great uh, Jeff Capel, uh, our coach, um, and um, he said, "We need to make sure that you're okay. I'm fine." I said, "Don't worry about me. We got to make sure that these players know, the guys know that they can do this without me. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, now um, they'll be able to do this by committee, That's and to right. see the way they rally around." Uh, it was great. And somebody said to me, self, uh, subconsciously and uh, behind the scenes, did you really enjoy the success of the team? I said, yes, because I was never, it was never about me. Right. It was always about the team. Now, when, you, when you're when chasing uh, a team concept, it's always about the team. It was nothing ill or nothing negative that went through my mind that year. 
uh, I was happy for the guys because it could have went the other way too. It could have, it could have. And then, and then for them, to, if it went the other way, then it would have been like, oh yeah, yeah, you guys couldn't win because O was out and, and, and you could have never done it. But them guys rallied and it was all about the team. And I think our point guard, Breon Dunlap, mm -hmm. had a great uh, responsibility as a mm -hmm. freshman, as a freshman point guard. Uh, he demanded and he controlled that team. Uh, so it was great. It was just great success. And that ended up helping me overcome the so far year in my junior year. But my senior year, um, when we had the likes of Reggie Bassett and Skip Youngblood and Mike Byers, um, these guys, man, Mark Pope, Kyle Bauer, yeah. you know, that team was good too. Yeah, it was um, good. And, you know, we, we, have, we had some great teams, you know, one of my closest friends, the um, one of them time, Joe Bunt came in. Yeah. He transferred in. Um, he was one of the best players. Mm. I couldn't beat him. I never could beat him. All the success, all the success. Those, those head fakes up or under. Oh, room. my God, man. He used to <laughs> kill that. me, man. He used yeah, to kill man. me with that, man. Like, his footwork was one of the best I was seeing in a long time, um, especially at that point. Uh, and we would play. We would call um, the security guys, and we'll go over to the practice gym, 12, 1, 2 in the morning, and we'll play one-on-one, -on -one, best out of seven. Mm. Uh, he would beat me 4-2, 4-1, 4-3. And I think I might have got him. Hey, we probably have played, me and Joe might have played 500 games together. I might have wow. beat him. I might have beat him 10 games. Really? And that's a real, yes, man, that's a real true story. Uh, one of the, and that motivated me also. Yeah. And then, uh, because I'm, I guarantee you, if he'd have stayed with us, he might have stole one of them player of the year awards. He was that good. He was that good, man. Um, and then we didn't really get a chance to play uh, the way we wanted to play together. If we had that chance, we might have won another championship. Who knows, man? Because that guy was good. He was really good. I remember he came in from AT with Coach Capel when he came. Yes, over. he did. He transferred. Yep. Yeah. So you you talked about sitting out the year that, that ODU uh beat Villanova. It was I know you want to be wanted to be a part of that, but you did you did get a chance to play in the NCAA tournament. Um talk talk about that experience. Um about making the tournament your senior year. You know, you, you win the CAA, you know, you're the player of the year. You get a chance to play New Mexico in that uh, NCAA tournament. Just talk about the whole process leading up to that. Well, you know, it was, it was last year. So, it was, you know, going in my senior year, the goals was uh, win the CAA championship, put ourselves in a position where we can get a at-large bid so we didn't have to worry about um, our automatic bid and don't have to worry about it at large by, you know, dominating preseason or the pre-conference schedule and having a successful year because during them times, man, the Colonial was really tough. It, it was, was tough. tough. It was tough. Um, and, and we was in first place. I think James Madison was second. I think it was a half a game uh, yeah. difference. So it was always tough. Um, so going into the season, you remember I speak about uh, team goals, individual goals. Uh, team goals to win the championship, get to uh, the NCAA tournament. Um, and I think even in that championship game, even in the game, because uh, we we had phases uh, during the middle of the colonial uh, season, we struggled. And then the last six games, we got it right. So we secured the number one uh, seed. Uh, James Madison was our biggest driver. Yep. Uh, rival, um, my four years and, and during the times, I guess, before that. Um, and I remember, man, they, they just kept on like trash talking. You know, some of them guys still, some, <laughs> you know, some friends now. And and I remember Lefty, uh, the great coach, uh, yeah. Trezell, he said, uh, why in the world did we schedule this game on Odell's homecoming game? <laughs> because uh, it was back and forth trash talk. Um, yep. And I told them, guys, my parents will be here. That's right. Um, um, they didn't come often because my father was sick mm -hmm. throughout my time at ODU. And I said, you know, if he's here, um, we're first place sure. on the line. Hey, come on, man. In my last game ever at Scope, um, be careful what you wish for, guys. 
And, and it was like that. I remember that game it was 29 points, 16 rebounds, a um, couple blocks, even got a dunk that game. Um, and that's something <laughs> and that's something I didn't do rally uh, after my yeah. ACL injury. Yeah. Um, and then obviously we we had the momentum going into the tournament, but right. them three games in the tournament, um, uh, Richmond, William and Mary and James Madison, it was all tough. It's all games, uh, it was it was all tough games. And it was so special because the women tournament was there too. Um, right. And we was doing it at the same time. So we won that tournament. So we get in um, to um, the NCAA tournament in uh, New Mexico. And you know, you, you look in, you, you're scouting. And it's like, all right, guys, uh, we got a shot. Um, we got a shot to do something. But uh, unfortunately, we lost that game. But only by a few points, you know, four yeah, or five points. Like four, like four points, I think. Yeah, and um, and and I had a subpar game. I, I don't, I didn't score ten points. I think I scored seven points in that game. And I, I talked to Jeff, um, Coach Capel, the late great. Um, mm, of course. Uh, um, and very happy that I stayed there once they made the decision to bring him in. Um, uh, wanted to mention that that um, you know what I mentioned before I was thinking about leaving but I didn't I didn't finish the story about why I stayed and he came in and he sold me on this team concept and the rest was history but after that tournament game and that loss um, and and he said you must how do you feel I said well personally maybe I was just too hyped for this game because I wanted I wanted it so bad um, now you've been put on a real big stage where you're going to be seen. And do I really think that hurt my chances of going, maybe having a, a better outlook? Maybe. But I think, you know, you're dealt the cards if you're dealt. Um, I don't never have no second, no regrets or second thoughts. Right. You know, you, you can't control this. Uh, maybe because I remember that game. Man. Um, I didn't really sleep well the night before uh, yeah. because actually now, I'm not sitting on the sideline in a suit. Right. Um, playing. Uh, I'm playing in it. I'm playing in it. So it's not like the NIT. This is a big. This is a big, uh, big stage here. So um, uh, yeah, I had. I feel cert a certain type of way. I thought I got outplayed um, personally. Um, I thought I had the big upside in that game. Um, and yeah, you know, came up short. Came up short. Cause they 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 built that whole matchup with you and Thomas. Oh man, Kenny Thomas. Kenny, Kenny Thomas. Kenny Thomas. It was, yes. it was all I kept hearing was Odell Hodge versus Kenny Thomas, and it was like that was the big post game matchup. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was like yeah. nobody even yeah. mentioned anybody else but you two. Yeah. That kind of that was the big matchup for that game. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and um, and I viewed that because I think you know on the East Coast uh, I was pretty pretty well known and out on the West Coast and and in the Midwest there. Um, he was he, he, he put his, his stamp down um, right. and dominated dominated the conference. And um, and he was an undersized five, but strong as an ox. So, and yeah. and and I, and I maybe I I cannot say it as far as did I miss did I did I overlook him? No, because I, I studied video on him. I had so much respect for him. Um, right. I, I guess I didn't think he was that strong um, right, right. because um, he, he was a, let's say, a combination of me and Joe, like when I was talking about Joe Bunn. Right. Uh, but I had so much difficulty with undersized post players like I did with Joe in the workouts. And, and I still credit him for making me the, the player and keeping me uh, on a high level. But uh but Kenny, man, Kenny was, uh, he was something else. He was a handful to deal with. And um, that right there also got me back in the gym yep. uh, to get ready for my pre-draft and uh, work on my game to get ready for the next level. So, uh, uh, you know, you, you you take, I always take something from losses. Yep. And Absolutely. that's what I took from from that biggest loss. Um, that, uh, but okay, you know, you you live and learn. And, and um, I picked that game or, that, that was a game that wasn't one of my best. And I'm humble about that. And, and I'm honest about that. You know, uh, you know, as much as I wanted and as much as I prepared for it, uh, that was my chance uh, to lead a team to the second round. And, uh, you know, I feel, I feel bad for that for a while. It took me a while to get over that. Uh, sure. And it, and it was, it was about the, the effort of the team with, and also 
my own personal effort, which I've led this team and this school for the last four or five years, um, even when I was injured. Um, and then still, the biggest you're still game. With the face. You're still with the face of the program. Yes, you know I mean? right, right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, you want to make sure that you represent your uh, your program with class. So, yeah. I mean, you still got us to that to that NCAA tournament, and um, yes. like I said, man, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I had a my roommate, his brother, who was already there, his older brother. He kept saying, "Man, you gotta see this guy named Odell Hodge." Man, he kept talking about you, so I I know what you mean. You were the face of the program, and you had to succeed, and you had to step up and and do your thing while you were there. And you, bro, you you did that, bro. I mean, it's, you had nothing to keep keep your head down. We're gonna talk about the no. retirement in a minute. Yes. But like, I, 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 I got to ask you this. I've always wanted to ask a, a men's player this. How much did the women's success, I don't want to say take away from your success, but did you guys like build off of their success? Or did, was there any kind of um, why the women getting more of this and why, you know what I mean? Was it ever a situation where the women were probably overlooking you guys a little bit? Because they, you know, they well, were with Tisha, Nairi and all them, you know? <laughs> Look, man, they, they had some good runs too, right? Oh, they, for sure, they, for sure. Um, when Tisha came, Tisha started working out and playing with us and right. uh, practicing and everything. But you, you know, it's it's interesting that you bring this up because I've had this question only a few occasions that they were asked this because at that time, ODU was known for their women's success. Yes, they were. Right, they were, bro. Um, yeah, they was known for their and rightfully so. Rightfully so. When you talk about the, the late great Ann Donovan and Nancy Lieberman. Oh yeah, man. my God, man. So we, just the legendary Wendy Larry. Yes, sir. Um, yep. you know, this is you know, Wendy and Ann was there as head coach, assistant coach during my time. Um, we had an incident in the practice gym one time, uh, where it was about territory. <laughs> and because because yeah. they wanted to be viewed equal and they was having we was starting to come around that you have to remember this is the year that we beat the we beat That's what I'm saying. You, you, the, you guys were getting you guys were getting it like look it was this is our campus too you know what i mean <laughs> the, the year before that we beat yeah. virginia as we beat virginia yeah, at, man, at the scope um, yeah yeah we beat virginia so we make a name for ourselves too and it was a, it was only about who had control of the gym during preseason? Right, right. Because they was always practicing in the field house. Okay, okay. And, and playing some games in the field house because they never right. played in scope, right? Right, right. But the practice gym was viewed uh, for both. Right. But it was an incident just one time. We only had one incident where we, we was arguing about uh, uh, gym use. Right. And that was probably one of the times where I showed, um, I tried to show myself a little bit and showed them up. And then next thing you know, I was in a meeting with uh, the the coaches of the women and and right, um, right. Uh, I'm, I'm just I just don't remember if Purnell was still there or was it Coach Cable? Right. Whoever was there, I was in a meeting with one of the assistant coaches of the men, with uh, the coaches of the ladies. And I apologize. I apologize because I was at the front of the center of that. Right, right. Um, but you know, I was like, hey, don't don't forget about us now. Like we're, we're coming up too. Um, but they was the powerhouse. They was uh the national known. Mm -hmm. Um hey, every chance that I got, I supported them. I was at the championship game in 97 against Tennessee in Cincinnati. I left my um uh, workout in Indianapolis uh, when it was over, and instead of coming back to Norfolk, I, I flew to Cincinnati. Oh, no, uh, yeah. yeah, and um, came back on a ten-hour flight uh, drive, not a flight, ten-hour drive with uh, a team manager, Mike Browntree. Uh, we got, we came back together, so I, I gave love also where it was deserved for, sure. um, for, sure. uh, for the women. But no, I, I wouldn't say that. I mean, that was all in and fun and, and yeah. competitive spirit. Um, we supported them. Uh, they supported us. Um, we was at their um, tournament in, in 97, uh, as much as we can be there. And they came to ours too. Okay, okay. Um, um, I think they came to all of our games. And it, cause I was big on 
I didn't, I didn't really come out that much in public. I was all right. about, you know, getting myself ready for the moment. And for the ladies, I did because we all were staying in the same hotel. So, you know, you always want to show show love to your to your uh, partners there in school. And, uh, they was doing their thing and we was doing ours. And I, I think with Nari and Tisha and Clarice, um, uh, Sarah and these girls, man, uh, Missy and Amber, you know, everybody from the team, we all got along. That's, we that's all got along. Say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, even before that, when Celeste was there, right. and um, um, we, we, we found a way to support each other. That's and it was no, so to answer your question, and along about Ray, no, it was no ill will, no jealousy there. Um, we respect what they did. Um, and they was. I mean, when I got there, I said, oh, you go to that women's school. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, and I mean, I like I said, they had so much success early on. Right. And, right. Uh, but I, 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 did, I did always see you guys around, you know, um, you know, yeah. mingling with the women's team. Yes. Um, yes. But I just never knew deep down if there was any, you know, ill will, but you just cleared it up and just, you know, said that it wasn't. But no. you know, when, when they have success and somebody else, because, you know, sometimes you do feel some kind of way, especially at that age. But yeah. Yeah. It yeah. So, look, you, you talked about your pre-draft workout, you know, your career ends at Old Dominion. What, what's your mindset at that time, Odell? Um, obviously, the NBA is your, is your dream. So you're going through these pre-draft workouts. How was that working out? And, and then what was your what was your uh, what was your mindset at that time? So um, let's fast forward um, to the draft. And you know, at that point, I switch agents two times, or in this case, maybe three times, um, just trying to make sure that I got the right one because I wanted to go. With one guy was locally from from Norfolk. Um, that didn't make no promises, just, you know, said that, look, we can do A, B, and C, um, but f realized that he didn't have that much experience with, uh, right. with basketball players. Um, and then I went with, um, a lot of people don't know this though, um, but it's a true story. Uh, only, only my closest guys at the time, Breon and, and Mike and uh, them guys, they knew that I took a trip after that, I took a trip to LA okay. and met and met the late great Johnny Cochran. Stop. Yes, sir. And Johnny uh, was introduced to me by my cousin. Okay. That was okay. that lives still in Riverside, California. Um, Johnny had a, a Asian firm. Okay. That was yes, run by did. some people. He had an Asian firm, um, and I signed with them. Okay. Um, it was also the agent of Brian Russell, right? Okay. Um, so um, from Utah Jazz. Yeah. So I signed. I signed with them, um, and then um, I went back to after that. You know, okay. Um, no, not really comfortable with that. Um, then Coach Capo set me down and, and recommend me to uh, to sign with uh, the guys he had known for a while, um, and we got that done started to get ready. So they got me a workout with Boston uh, right away after the draft. So when I did get drafted, uh, I was in Boston the next day um, for a uh, three day workout. So after that, you know, so it was, it was pretty good, but you did workouts is, I want to say it's all political. Um, yep. um, you have, uh, you know, 20, 30 guys in your same position yep. trying to compete with each other. So who, you know, them guys know who they want to see. They, right. they know who they want to look at. So after, um, uh, let's say, um, the second day, had the three-day workout, the second day, uh, they came to me. Rick Pitino was the coach. Um, they came to me. And, you know, I, for this moment, I always respect the fact that he came and he was part of that also. Um, they sit me down and um, told me, okay, we're going to let you go. Uh, I think they did a few guys like that too. We're gonna let you go. Um, um, maybe you should go to Europe um, to to work on your game, and we'll keep an eye on you. Um, and then I took that. Okay, no problem. Thanks for your time. Really appreciate it. Then I went to the Wizards and uh, had a workout with the Wizards. But the same story. I'm there with some of the guys I saw in Boston. Um, again, you there, uh, and it's really heavy uh centers and four uh, power fours there and i said man 
why why do you ask everybody to come when you have yeah, 10 guys at each position yeah. you know yeah. um so that was just a three-day workout it was nothing about cutting anybody uh ben wallace was was already on the team um so that was pretty good that was nice that was nice and then i went to toronto i went to toronto for a workout uh but they eventually they all tell the same story so i said you know what if it's meant to be i'll come back right. but i'm gonna go to europe and uh so they got me a job um, not too long after the Toronto workout. Got me a job in Fenerbahce in 1997. Uh, so I went to Fenerbahce, Turkey. Uh, wasn't really comfortable living in Turkey. Uh, it, was, it was just too big. Um, so Thanksgiving of 97, I asked for a release. Came back. I visited a couple of games in Norfolk um, at, at ODU. Uh, during that time, I think I saw two games. Uh, at that time, saw one women game and one men's game, um, and then um, I went uh, I went back uh, to Martinsville for a couple of days. Then I ended up going to uh, Taiwan. I went to Taiwan from December '97 to um, July of '98, uh, and then I've been in Belgium ever since. Mm. Yeah, so I've been in Belgium since August 1998. That's awesome, man. Yeah, man. So, never never so, came back, bro. You stayed over there. <laughs> I stayed over. I stayed over, man. Yeah. Like, I, I'm here. And and I think the closest time that I ever thought about coming back for good was, um, so at this particular time, I'm in a trans, transition period uh, because I was, I was been in Belgium for, um, at that time, um, four years. Mm -hmm. um, or let's say two years here, um, one year there. So, uh, so let's just say six years. So six the years. first six years uh, of Belgium. But before that, after the third year, um, it was at a crossroad because at that time, I'm dating a girl, uh, a woman from Martinsville um, that was a year behind me in school, but three years behind me in age, right? So um, she she left she i graduated in 92 she graduated in 93 all right mm -hmm. so she ended up going to norfolk state for a year before she transferred over to U. so but we've been together since i was uh uh 17 and she was 14 so we've been together for quite so long you know a long time before so we went to high school together uh ended up going to college together ended up because of my rest year year we ended up graduating in 97 together so that was great with our family there uh she came with me uh she came to visit in uh, turkey and in taiwan um, and she came with me my first year in belgium uh, so that was the year my father died too in, in 98 mm -hmm. so um so you know we, we was together man we was together all the time um and then after my third year you know I'm here all the time now. And then she decides to, after this first year of Belgium, she decides to go back. So by her going back, then, you know, you in a, you're in a crossroad. Uh, okay. Do you follow her back now? Or do you still want to, you know, get it done and play? Uh, so we had a, a, a heart to heart. And she said, I'm going to go back to school. And I said, yeah, if you go back to school, yeah, I'm going to probably stay and play. But at the same time, I'm going to probably start dating other people too because I'm going to see, uh, even at my time at ODU, you know, even when we was so-called on breaks and all that stuff, I was never a guy that, you know, was, was I, I, I couldn't I couldn't afford to, man. Like just, you know, I was a one, I, I was dating her. Right. And, you know, I think maybe out of five years or so we was on a break or a breakup and you know you might you might see you know how it is man yeah, young, yeah. young college students yeah man. you know so yeah. you know I'm, I'm telling it deep now because yeah. it's 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 uh it's surreal it's it's it's, it's the way it was and i think you know one or two times in school that you know we might have dated other people or uh to test but we always found our way back mm -hmm. and then we had we we had a open open conversation uh, here uh, before she left and we decided to end it as friends okay um 
So she went back to um, pursue her masters and I stayed in Europe and I came home every summer. And, you know, of course we will bump into each other, we'll see each other, um, but it was more of a friend uh, in the history of, of being together. And I think when, when I met my wife, um, but I met a little bit later, uh, it wasn't three months no more. Right, right. A month, two weeks, three weeks, because now I'm starting to, you know, try to have a family. So we got married in 2003, Sophie. Um, and then in 2004, we had our first child, Max. Nice. Yeah. Uh, and then in 2007, we had our second. Um, okay. And then, you know, 2022, I'm still in Belgium. <laughs> still. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, it's, 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 you know, most people, a lot of people just, you know, they play, had their, you know, playing career and they come back, but you decided yeah. to stay, man. And that's, yeah. that's, that's just a testament to, to the country. You know what I mean? Yes, so. absolutely. Um, and, and I don't know if I was anywhere else other than Spain or, or France, if I would have done the same thing, maybe I already been back, you know, but life brings you and takes you into so absolutely. many different directions. And, yeah. um, the only way I think I see myself back now, it will be through uh, through my two boys. Uh, yeah. We'll see um, uh, what's going to happen with them. Um, I will I will be back uh, in April uh, for about a month or less yeah. than a month doing our doing our spring uh, Easter vacation. Okay, and we'll go visit a few places because they are at the point now where they want to play ball here. So okay. they want to take what they have learned uh, in uh, in Europe and tested in high school. So we'll see. Uh, I think my oldest one, he's at a crossroad uh, because he has one more year left uh, of high school here. And if he goes to the state, we can reclassify That's right. uh, That's right. and, and, and make him a junior. So I think it comes down to if he wants to spend two more years in high school, but if he wants to get to where he wants to get to, maybe it's the best thing for him. But I let them make the decisions and I try to, we try to support them as much as possible. You have a bus, I know you said you bust out the JMU tapes. You ever bust out any old Odell Hodge highlight reels? And let them know. Look, Dad has some. You know this this new generation, man. Yeah, they don't want to hear. They don't, they don't want to hear. Uh, you're, too, <laughs> you're too old for that. There you go. They're too old. Um, yeah. Yeah. The, the excuses they give. Oh, come on, Dad. Uh, all we hear is <laughs> what you did in your time. I said, man, right, you guys, right. you don't have what it takes yet, guys, because you're not mentally strong to That's handle right. it. Right. Um, up until I think up until. Uh, uh, maybe a year and a half ago, and they couldn't beat me, man. And now I'm old as one. <laughs> I'm old as one. I, I've surrendered, man. I can. Yeah, that's uh, it. It's nothing. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I, I passed it. I've officially passed the torch. I tell you what, though. Um, since they have opened the the number system in Europe, because mm -hmm. normally it used to be four to fifteen, you can wear your uniform. You know? But now they are open, so you can you can play in zero to ninety nine. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. It, it, but in Europe, it was never allowed. They both, in their respectful teams, plays in number 33. Hey, hey, that should tell you something, though. That should tell you something. They are listening, bro. They are listening. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They are listening. Hey, that, was the, that was one of the greatest respects it that has I ever to be. It has from to my be. two kids because yes. um, they know what the number 33 means to me. That's right. Bro. Um, That's right. And um, for them to want to wear that, I mean, it put a tear in my eyes. That's yeah. it, man. So yeah. they are they are listening. They do listen, bro. Yeah, absolutely. Speak, speaking of 33, you have it behind you, but I got to ask you this, bro. Like a kid from a kid from Martinsville, you know, you're living in Belgium now, everything you've been through, when ODU contact you, contacted you to say, look, we're going to retire Mr. 33 Odell Hodge and put him in the Constant Center Chartway Arena forever. What did that mean? It, it meant everything. It was the greatest honor that I could ever receive at that university. And yep. I've had so much success there. But that company, because, you know, you, you think about it, but you know what? We, we never talked about it. We, we right. thought about it. We, 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 um, we had some, you know, Carol Hudson, um, the legendary Carol Hudson. See um, her, that's my guy. That's my guy. You know, like Carol, he's always on top of things. And we was visiting, we was there when the boys was really young in 2009. And um, we was there in, in the arena. Uh, and that was when it was first talked about. Right. And then I left, I came back to Europe. Um, and then Carol, he contacted me. 
Call me. Call me on the phone. And uh, hey, man, we want to uh, we want to retire your jersey. This was uh, this was uh, this was in August of 2009. I was there visiting, and so he contacted me in August and said, "We want to retire your jersey." Wow. Uh, and then he said, "Check your schedule and come back to me." Right. And, I, and he said because he gave me the choice to choose the game I want to retire in. So I oh, choose, nice. uh, nice. yeah. So I choose George Mason because one of my good friends was assistant coach. Mike Hugo was assistant coach there. He's now head coach of Bowling Green. Okay. He was my he was my best man at my wedding uh, nice. here in Belgium. Nice. So nice. Um, uh, that's what that's the reason because I wanted to choose JMU because of Lewis Ruff. Um, you know, one of my other closest friends that played over here. Um, okay. One of my rivals that ended up over here and. To this day, we still stay in contact also. Um, but um, that's the reason why I choose that. That that meant everything. That was the, you know, to be able to share that with my wife um, yeah, and, and my high school coach. Uh, one of my best friends uh, that, that played with me in Belgium was also present. I think I brought in with my family. I think I had like over 30 people that That's attended awesome, and they I shared it with you, man. That's they awesome. all shared it with me. And I had 10, 10 of my closest friends here in Belgium come on that trip with us. It was, uh, oh, man, it was, awesome. it was phenomenal. One of the, one of the greatest uh, times in my life. That's amazing, bro, man. This has been great, man. This is, oh man, this is like going down memory lane, bro. I told oh, you, absolutely. I've, been, I've been a huge fan for a long time, man. I, I really appreciate, appreciate that. This. Thank you. Hey man, we we gonna um we gonna end it with a segment called "Keeping It Real," man. It's a couple yes. quick hitters. I'm gonna throw some questions at you. Just whatever comes first to your mind. Just throw them back. You ready? Yep, I'm ready. All right. You mentioned it earlier about Eric Montross, but I want you to tell us the one player that got you that made you realize I need to get to the gym or basketball's not for me. What's that? Who's that one player that got you? You know, made you double double uh double guess yourself. The player that, that played at UVA, the center, um, in 1992 also, um, and, and that's Ted Jeffers. Ooh, Jeffries. Okay, yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Ted Jeffers uh, at UVA um, because he talked He talked also. Uh, he was quiet. Oh, you use this big-time freshman come in. Um, hey, man, you you. you you need to, uh, you know, you need to work a little bit more. You're not Ooh. there yet. Okay. Um, and I took that, I took that as a compliment because of the upside. Right. And right. he taught, he taught me a lesson. He taught me a lesson. I mean, we talked about Eric Montrose, you know, he yeah. had a star yeah. stutter. He was a star, you know, at, at Carolina, but Ted Jeffers, uh, he helped me stay humble stay and humble. continue to work and continue to work. That's a good one. That's a good, that's a good yeah. story. Yep. Best food or dish in Belgium? Your go-to dish or food in Belgium, my guy. What's up? My go-to uh, is Stoflis. What is Stoflis? Stofli. What is that? <laughs> Stoflis is um, it's, uh, meat. So okay. it's like um, a difference of maybe you can chop it up, uh, steak or roast beef. Okay. And in, um, in a um, stewy type sauce. Okay. Okay. So it's like a beef stew. Beef stew, you know, like we, you know, country boys, uh, you yeah. see when it's really cold, like sometimes, <laughs> cold outside. Yeah. yes, you know, they make us beef stew or they make us vegetable <laughs> soup. So this is stove fleece, um, and we eat it with fries. So you you mix Ooh, all the okay, yeah, you, that sounds you, good. You, you mix yeah. it, you mix it all together. So that's my go-to, uh, and then you know the wings and everything else, man. But okay, everybody has wings, but <laughs> a, a traditional Belgium dish that I go to uh, is stove fleece. We call it stove fleece, but it's it's basically uh, some roast beef uh, mixed up with some um, stew sauce and uh, some fries. Yeah, that sounds kind of good. Because, you know, Belgium is known for their fries. So. Oh, yeah, absolutely. My yeah. wife, loves that. she loves French yeah. fries. So. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> um, all right. Best player you played with or against in Europe? Best player I played with or against in Europe? That's right. Um, Oh, that's a good one, man. That is a good one. I played against some some whew, some big players, man. Uh, Randolph Chervis. Ooh, nice. Wake Forest. Yep. Wake Forest in Turkey. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He Turkey. could go. He could definitely go. Yeah. And I'm going to throw another one out because this guy, he, he meant so much um, to me in my comeback when I came back to play in first division is uh, Andre Emmett. 
Oh, from uh Texas Tech, right? Texas Tech. Uh God bless man. his soul, man. He, yeah, he got man. he, he had that peace. big accident. Yeah, uh, we 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 had some battles uh over here in Belgium when he came and played because he had the upside. He was yeah, the NBA man. guy. And yep. um yep. uh Andre Emmett, man. Yes, sir. Yeah, he could definitely and, go um, too. I remember and I, and, yeah. And um I didn't play against him, but he Good. was here. He was here for one day. And I wish we had a chance to play with him, play against him. Was uh your dominance has oh he, oh you did okay so he was there he came <laughs> he was there for a day didn't okay. like his scenery and left oh, and was man. with Miami Heat ever since 2000, Stop, 2005, 2006. yes true story true story wow. he showed up he showed up in Ostenda Belgium Ostenda okay. Ostenda now is the ten times in a row champion um, yes. in Belgium uh, they have dominated Belgian basketball since two thousand and eleven and um, he showed up there on the beach, man. It's one of the nicest places to be in Belgium. Um, didn't like it. Got back on the plane, went home. Stop. And been in Miami ever since. <laughs> true, <laughs> true story. So I think it, I think it worked out well for him, right? I think, I think, I think he did pretty good. I think he did pretty good. <laughs> worked out, worked out well. Yes, sir. Yeah. I'm gonna put you on the spot on this one. I don't want no older you alums or players to be mad at this, but okay. pickup game. You got to have five, okay? Four, including yourself, of former ODU players. Who you taking, bro? That I played with or just all time? Oh, just all, all time. Anybody from ODU? Joe Buck. You got to have him. Got to have Joe. Who, who? P.D. Sessions. Who? Joe. Oh, that's an all sauce thing right there. I'm going to throw one at you. That is going to shock you a little bit, but I gotta have him, and the, and the reason why is just it's just his tenacity and, and what he meant to the program, um, and 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 that player is Breon Dunlap. He was the man, bro. Um, people don't realize, man, how good he was as a floor leader. He put the ball right where you wanted it, man. Yeah. Um, yes. and, and and the last guy, um. I have to go because I have so much respect for him and, and what he what he meant. And then by picking this one, um, we put Joe. Uh, we can put Joe at the three because I know he always wants to play the three. So um, and he yeah, can post up the smaller guy. I was going to ask the you where you going to put him. Yeah, for yeah. Sure. <laughs> so the 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 last player we can put Petey at the two, so we can have a big lineup. Kenny yeah. Gaddison. Oh yeah, Kenny yeah, Gaddison. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. You know, yeah, you have to yes, put sir. Kenny there, man. Kenny, that's a good lineup, Kenny, bro. Kenny good was. Lineup. Uh, Kenny was instrumental for me um, and always kept it real, man. Right. So, right. you know, I, I got to put Kenny in that. And like you said, it, it's no disrespect it's, to anybody no, else. No, it's man. no disrespect. It's just, it's just your five. I mean, you got it's just my five. And the sure. beauty of it, though, Adele, is you leave so many people off. There's so many great players that come from yes. there that you're right. going to miss somebody, but it's no disrespect to anybody. We just no, no, of course not. Of course not. Absolutely. All right, la last question. I'm going to get you out on this one, man. We talked about him. Rest in peace, Mr. Uh, Jeff Capel and his family. Give me your best Jeff Capel story. My best Jeff Capel story. Um, we was in uh, we was in Paris uh, or wow. outside of Paris. We was in outside of Paris uh, when he first got the job. He took okay. us to Paris. Took us to France. So we went to Europe um, to just get to know each other. And uh, far as the, the team is and everything is concerned, yeah. is um, this is when we knew. That he was no one to be messing, you know, to, to right, be messing right, with, right, uh, right, for sure. Because you know he had that military background, and right. uh, you know he told us stories all the time. Uh, the best story about Jeff um, is we was in we was in uh, France, and we decided to go out, um, and and you know like like college students would do, you know, not, not too far away from the hotel, but we decided <laughs> to go out. Um, and you know, I've been in Europe before with the NIT All Star, so right, you know, right. I had a little bit of experience of, you know, some of the nightlights. But you know, we asked around, so we ended up going out. Um, but when we got back, when we came back, we had a, uh, I think, nine thirty uh, wake up call um, to ready to leave to go to our next city, um, and um, we um, we overslept. Oh man! And 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 he found out that we uh, we went out, and. Um, so instead of punishing us when we got back or punishing us in the next city, on our trip, he made the bus stop every two or three miles. We'd get out and have to walk. 
just to wake us up so we wouldn't so we wouldn't sleep on the bus. Oh man, that's crazy. So that's a good when story. you think when you when you think when you think that okay, now is it? I think we did it ten times. I think we did it ten times. So a trip, the trip should have been three hours. It right, ended up being right. like five and a half hours because <laughs> we sent in the meshes. And um yeah, man. And, and then uh and we already knew um uh, not to mess with coach man like don't mess with him because uh uh he will he will do he will do things that you you wouldn't think was, was out of the ordinary and and then one of the other stories uh one of the other stories i could never beat him in a shooting contest man capable capable man capable to shoot man for real yes, and and i thought i was a good long distance shooter i think i beat man. him one time one time out of 30 or 40. <laughs> yeah, i was knocking him down man knocking yeah, him down. i didn't um, i didn't know he had it i knew he had a game like that okay yes sir he had he had much game much game yeah, yeah. he was he was he was great man a great yeah. man um I, you know if you his son's at the university of pittsburgh doing his thing yes i keep um, in touch i keep in touch yeah. with him I, I try to leave jeff be because he's busy with he's I, busy. I speak to jason yeah. i speak to jason quite often because okay. uh, you know i'm putting that bug in there just like i'm putting in, in coach jones here like you know the, them hodge boys is coming up man they coming yeah. they coming uh, you know and, and my new saying is help is on the way <laughs> help is on the way they come help help is the highest name man. yes sir. Hey, all you gotta do is look up and see your number up there they, they really got some pedigree you know what i mean <laughs> But look, Odell, man, I've been, I've been, I've been saying this for a long time, man. I, I really appreciate you coming on and just telling your story. Um, you know, everybody knows your story, but to revisit it and bring it back and have all your fans have a chance to get to know you a little bit more, it, it's been so, so much fun doing this, man. I really appreciate you taking some the, time for me, man. The, the pleasure is all mine. Uh, it's great, man. It's, it's great to be here to relive some of this. It's been a long time since I have talked about this in great detail. Um, and you know, some of the stories, you know, to hear it again myself yeah. and reliving it is, uh, is fantastic. And I appreciate the platform and, uh, you're doing great things and, uh, I appreciate it. I appreciate you. Uh, appreciate you having me on. Yes, man. Um, I'll let you know when it, uh, when it, when it's, when it's, per when it's ready to be on air, real to real sports on, 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 uh, Facebook, okay. Instagram and Twitter. I'll let you know, man, we'll have a, everybody from ODU and beyond to take a look at this and uh, watch the. The great Odell Hodge, man. Once again, man, thanks so much for coming on, man. Appreciate much you. love. Appreciate you, man. My guy, appreciate you, man. This episode is sponsored by La Vida Agency. Protect, prepare, plan.